For more on the rapid development of artificial intelligence in China, let's bring in Chui Chua. He's vice president of big data analytics and cognitive at IDC Asia Pacific's AI computing department. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, we know that China wants to become a global leader in artificial intelligence by 2030. How important right. is that to China's overall modernization of its industries and its economy? Uh, it's really important because if you think about it, uh, for example, an aging population, there's a huge investment going to artificial intelligence application in medical field. So that will address a lot of the health issues, you know, the aging population trying to find a cure for certain diseases or even cancer. And the other factor will be, you know, cost of labor. Uh, neighboring countries such as Vietnam or even India, etc., where the cost of labor is a lot lower, uh, there's a need to actually uh, automate and increase the efficiency of uh, the manufacturing uh, the factories too. Now, you mentioned medicine as one of the uses. What are some of the other top uses that China is either exploring or currently using with AI at the moment? Uh, I would say the top use case would be public safety uh, in terms of uh, providing uh, public safety in the area of uh, a smart building or city or even transportation and there's multiple use cases already in place today where they're using in production mode so i think china's leading in the area of uh, public safety now with many of these newly proposed u.s tariffs targeting china's high-tech industries especially mm -hmm. from its made in china 2025 plan how do you see that potentially impacting the growth of ai in china uh, I don't see a major impact on that because it's more of creating the models, the intellectual properties. And a lot of times uh, when we look at artificial intelligence, the adoption will be based on what is the black box? Is it really a black box or do we actually understand what's going on in that model? Um, typical um, technology buyers would not just go out and buy a black box assuming that it's going to do certain functionality because technology buyers will actually want to understand what's the AI model behind that, uh, that technology or that solution. So the implications may not be as big as um, the, the, tax, uh, the tariffs that are being imposed right now. Now, China's already making great strides in this. So mm -hmm. what sort of policy framework is needed to sustain the momentum that China has in AI right now? Uh, two things, right? Um, the, 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 the need to uh, be transparent, as I mentioned earlier. A lot of the technology is being developed based on the existing data. Uh, great thing about uh, China is, um, for lack of better comparison, is uh, not as uh, uh, restrictive on the privacy issue. So a lot of data are readily available for uh, training the artificial intelligence on it. Um, so the key thing to continue that progress is to provide the transparency of all these artificial intelligence models that are being trained and then being deployed across the different uh, industries, whether it's in the financial sector, medical sector, or even in the enterprise space. Now let's talk jobs. An estimated mm -hmm. 2.3 million finance industry employees in mainland China are either likely to lose their jobs or be reassigned to new roles by 2027 as they fall mm -hmm. victim to some of this disruptive technology. How prepared right. is China for this? Um, I think China is pretty well prepared on that because if you look at uh, the new generation of um, education uh, in a research institution or in the, in the universities, a lot of the jobs, a lot of the curriculum are focused on data science, artificial intelligence uh, at a much higher level uh, of uh, education rather than just focusing on some of the manual processing uh, tasks. So if you look at the various industrial revolutions, jobs are definitely lost because as we apply more automation and with artificial intelligence, we're applying intelligent automation. So where the key high value jobs and tasks are will be coming out from uh, the universities and the research institutions training the future generation of citizens and workers in the workforce. And you can see already the curriculum that's being applied being, uh, in China are more focused on this high value uh, research area. Now, we know that French President Emmanuel Macron promised mm -hmm. $1.85 billion of public funding because he really wants to keep up with trying to keep up with the US and with some of these right. Chinese tech giants. Right. What does global competition look like in this space and how will China keep its edge? Right. So I don't really see it as a competition. A lot of folks call it the AI war. Um, I kind of relate that to an analog analogy of wine, right? The French and the Bordeaux, the, the Champagne, Napa and Sonoma Valley has their Pinot Noir, and uh, New Zealand has their caps off, right? So artificial intelligence, as you said earlier, is really, really difficult. And the great thing is artificial intelligence can be applied to multiple applications, multiple use cases, as I mentioned earlier. Let's try to solve the cancer for cure. If we can put more resources into it, the better it is for the human race. Right. So a lot of different problems for us to solve out there. And the more resources we throw at it as a human, kind, uh, as a human race, the better it is. Um, 
Indeed. Whether it's for financial industries or medical, healthcare, or even manufacturing. All right, we'll have to leave it there, unfortunately. Thank you so much. Chui Chuave of IDC Asia Pacific.